No small cell lung cancer is the most common type of lung cancer and even one of the most commonly diagnosed cancers. Among those most likely to be cured by surgery has early stages, lung cancer occurs still in nearly one third of patients. Unfortunately, for decades, early stage treatment remained largely unchanged, with surgery regarded as the gold standard of care. However, the treatment landscape has changed in recent years, especially when we are considering advanced stages, for which the development of immunotherapy or molecular targeted therapy significantly increased survival rate and patient's quality of life. The introduction of novel uh, systemic treatment before surgery, as we call the neoadjuvant treatment, or after the operation, uh, known as adjuvant ones, has changed completely the possible alternatives for early stage patients. Currently, we have three approved regimens in this scenario, but their indications, approvals, and of course availability largely uh, differ between countries. Many unanswered questions still remain. So responses differ among uh, patients, and while some predictive markers as uh, smoking or a PDL1 expression or stage 3 disease suggest that there is a greater magnitude of effect, the need for a more accurate biomarker testing and patient selection remains. Curative intent resection to surgically remove tumors occurred in almost 80% of patients in these large studies, uh, which is deemed acceptable, but it still means that uh, one out of five patients do not complete the planned multimodality treatment. So can we improve on this trend through a better patient selection or a different strategy? Definition of resectability and operability, along with the standardization of surgical methods, are for sure domains that we need to expand more. Until this question finds granular answers, the transformed treatment landscape uh, in early stage can increase major challenges to healthcare system and magnify existing disparity in care. Enhancing access to these new drugs, fostering interdisciplinary collaboration between surgeons and medical specialists, will be the key to standardize and harmonize MDT discussion across the healthcare realities. In recent years, we have witnessed a remarkable advancement in the treatment of early stage non small cell lung cancer, mainly due to the neoadjuvant and adjuvant immunotherapies and targeted therapies. However, moving these new groundbreaking treatments from the research phase into actual clinical care is a complex and lengthy journey. Before such groundbreaking treatments can be widely used, they must gain regulatory approval. After regulatory approval has been granted, health technology assessments need to be done. But across Europe, differences in how countries assess and whether or not they approve and reimburse these treatments can lead to unequal access for patients. Our upcoming series in the Lancet Regional Health Europe takes a closer look into these challenges with a specific focus on the European context. We explore the various ways in which countries assess and adopt new treatments shaped by, by their unique healthcare policies and reimbursement systems. Because these variations, not all patients have the same access to these treatments, highlighting the need for a more harmonized approach across countries. We are calling for a joint effort from researchers, pharmaceutical companies, healthcare providers and policymakers, because together we can make the assessment and approval of these treatments more consistent across Europe. Advanced stage non-small cell lung cancer is an aggressive disease with historically poor survival and 1% or fewer patients surviving five years. Much of this has markedly changed in recent years with an increasing acceleration in innovation resulting in an ever-increasing number of new drugs being developed, including targeted therapies, immunotherapies and antibody drug conjugates, leading to frequent and major changes in treatment guidelines. So how have new drugs changed routine care? These issues pose regulatory and reimbursement challenges. 
The drugs are given accelerated regulatory approval by the EMA, but frequency of underlying predictive genotype is very low. Randomizing phase three trials may be demanded by EMA, but may be difficult to conduct. First, because if phase two data indicate marked efficacy of a drug, phase three trials could be considered unnecessary and potentially unethical. And secondly, because different European regulatory agencies may take different views on the appropriateness of data sets for reimbursement decisions. EMA timescales for approval after first data set release also remain problematic, and pre-licensing access of therapies varies markedly between countries through government approved and industry sponsored schemes. This drug access problem is also confounded by difficulties in diagnostics. Optimal panel-based genotyping is either not performed or performed in a limited manner across much of Europe, and even when implemented fully, logistic difficulties mean turnaround times for results may be incompatible for clinical decision making. So how should we address these challenges? We need to ensure that our patients are undergoing the optimal biomarker testing method to allow them to access the appropriate therapies for the molecular diagnosis. We also need regulatory alignment to implement drug approvals, including in rare biomarker populations in a robust but yet meaningful timeframe from data release. But regulatory reform is not enough. We need reimbursement approval to be synchronous to regulatory approval. And finally, where proportionate and appropriate, we need aligned routes to pre-licensing drug access for our patients to allow them to have the best for what can be the worst time in their lives. Thank you for your attention.